I'm Caitlin. I'm Cecilia. And I'm Natalie. And we did Be Cozy, Effects of Microclimate on Pollinators. The reason that we're looking at this is because there is extremely limited pre-existing literature on not only the bees of Peru, but also their thermal responses to microclimates with changing climate. Before we jump into the specifics, let's imagine a scenario. Picture this. You're sitting on the beach on a sunny day and it's getting really hot. You start to sweat. How do you cool off? Do you move under the shade of your umbrella or do you go for a dip in the ocean? These are both ways to cool down on a hot summer day in the sand. So why does sitting in the shade or swimming in the water cool you down if the temperature outside is the same? When you're in the shade, the sun's rays and radiation are not directly hitting your skin, making the air itself feel cooler. Similarly, when you get out of the water, you feel cooler because latent heat is removed from your body through evaporative cooling, consequently lowering your body's temperature. Just as elevated temperatures affect us when we're in direct sunlight, this also affects other species like bees. Bees have the ability to thermoregulate. This means they can internally generate heat to maintain a constant body temperature. Bees can also cool themselves down when they get overheated via convective cooling. This occurs when the ambient temperature is lower than the internal temperature of the bee, so heat is lost via convection. Body size is also an important consideration for bees. Warm-up rate is determined by balancing heat generation and loss, which are affected by changes in body mass. Essentially, smaller bees can warm up much faster than larger bees. Since these smaller bees rely more on external conditions for heat, behavioral mechanisms of thermoregulation are critical for regulating their body temperature, internal functions, and overall performance. One of the most important activities for female bees is foraging to collect pollen and nectar to bring back to their nest and feed their young. This foraging can take place in different microclimates depending on whether flowers are located in the sun or in the shade. So what exactly is a microclimate? It is a small climate generated within a specific space that differs from the surrounding space. And these can be created by sunlight, wind, humidity and moisture, and flower morphology. For example, the structure of the petals and orientation of the flowers can help to retain or dissipate heat, creating a temperature disparity with the surrounding environment. Another important question to consider is how can microclimates support different pollinator species? Different microclimates can alter the resource availability of flowers, which affects pollinator behavior and activity, such as how long they spend on a particular flower and how many times they visit that flower. Given all of the information that we've just discussed, we decided to generate three hypotheses for our studies. The first is that microclimate conditions shape bee community composition as mediated by body size. The second being body size is positively associated with the bee's ability to generate heat. And the third being flower morphology shapes microclimatic conditions for foraging bees. Now let's get down to the serious beesness, catching bees. We collected our data by establishing two patches, one in the sun and one in the shade at each of our three locations. To collect data, we captured bees and took their temperature as well as the temperature of the flower they were foraging on. These measurements were used to establish variation between microclimates and bee temperature in sun and shade conditions. To determine the body size of the bees, we used two different methods. One was simply by weighing the bees on a small pocket scale and taking their approximate weight in grams. And the second was a process called taking the intertegular distance or the space in between the two yellow kidney bean shaped structures on the left side of the screen. This is an approximation of body size that also helps us to determine the approximate size of the thorax, which is where all of the flight muscles that generate heat in the body are located. One eternity later. We collected data in PSAC with an elevation of 3,100 meters. We catch up with an elevation of 2,800 meters and Manu with an elevation of 500 meters. Ultimately, we concluded from our findings that our hypotheses were not supported by the data we collected. However, we did find that location along an elevation gradient has an impact on the body size of bees, that the difference in bee body temperature versus ambient environment is impacted by microclimatic conditions and locality, and that flower morphology doesn't drive microclimatic variance. We would like to thank the U.S. National Science Foundation for funding the IRES program through Penn State. We would also like to thank our mentors, Ruben Martin, Dr. Margarita Lopez Uribe, and Dr. Luis Duque for assisting with our research. Additionally, we would like to thank several students from universities around Peru, Valentina, Fatima, and Alex, for assisting with data collection. 
and professors from several universities across the states and Peru for their valuable contributions to this research. <laughs>